So in this unit, we finally come to a point in which we uh, describe how to develop uh, project six, which is uh, implementing uh, the assembler. And we wish to remind you that uh, we have two options uh, at this stage. If you want to uh, write a program that actually implements uh, an assembler using a programming language, you're welcome to uh, listen carefully to this unit and uh, uh, use the guidelines that we provide to actually develop this program. Uh, if you don't have a programming uh, background, uh, then there's a, an, another unit that uh, describes an equivalent project that uh, implements an assembler without actually uh, writing code. Uh, but I think that um, every one of you, even if you don't write the assembler uh, using a programming language, uh, it, it may pay off to listen to this unit and, uh, and, and see an example of you know, how to put together, how to uh, carry out a complex uh, uh, software development project. So um, without further ado, um, we have to develop a hack assembler, and uh, here's the contract. We decided that uh, uh, we will call our assembler hack assembler. This is an arbitrary decision. And, uh, and this program should translate hack uh, assembly programs, programs that are written in symbolic uh, hack code, into executable uh, hack uh, binary code. And uh, we assume that the source program is written in uh, or supplied in a file, a text file called some name dot ASM. And given that this is the input that you have to operate on, your hack assembler program should generate a new file called the same name as the input file dot hack, so different extension. And you know, once you create this file, we should be able to take this file, put it into the uh, hack computer and actually execute it. Now, uh, we are making a, a big assumption, which is that the XXS, that the supplied uh, input file is error free. So we don't have any programming uh, syntax error uh, errors in this file. And um, in the last unit of this week, we'll talk about whether or not this uh, assumption uh, uh, makes sense. So with all that in mind, you have to develop an assembler that uh, follows this contract. And just for the sake of the argument, let's assume that you did it in Java, although you can do it in any other uh, high level language. If you did it in Java and you want to actually use the assembler, then uh, we assume that you operate in some uh, shell environment uh, and uh, you type you know, Java, the name of the uh, uh, Java virtual machine, you provide the name of your assembler, hack assembler, and then you give this assembler, your assembler, uh, an argument which is the name of the input file that you want to translate. And once you provided uh, uh, this command and hit enter, your assembler goes to work, it translates the supplied uh, file, the xxx.asm, and it creates uh, a new uh, hack file that can be actually uh, that that contains the uh, uh, the binary code, and if this file already exists, it overrides it. So, this is what you normally do, right? You you write a program, you assemble it, translate it. If you don't like the result, you make some corrections to the source code, you reassemble it. So it makes sense to override the same uh, uh, target file again and again. So that's what we have to do in this project. Now, how do we do it? Well, once again, you are welcome to write this assembler in any high-level language uh, that you uh, please. And yet, we recommend that you follow a certain software architecture. And we described this architecture in the previous unit, so I don't want to, uh, 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 to spend too much time talking about it, but I just want to remind you that the architecture that we propose consists of four different software modules. Each of these modules should be, uh, should be a standalone software module that can, can also be unit tested in isolation from the other modules. So we need a parser that unpacks uh, each instruction into its underlying fields. 
we need a module called code that actually translates the symbolic fields, the mnemonics, into uh, its uh, corresponding uh, uh, binary value. And by the way, I should say it more precisely. It's not that the module translates. The module has a set of methods that are used to carry out this translation. We need a symbol table module that contains a set of methods that manages, uh, that manage uh, and create, a, create and manage a symbol table. And finally, we need the main module which actually drives the show. And you know, it opens the, the input file, it creates an output file, and, uh, and actually goes through the uh, entire translation process by calling methods from uh, the previously described uh, uh, modules. This uh, main uh, module uh, will probably be named uh, the heck assembler or something like that, depending on the language that, uh, that you will end up using. So this is the proposed uh, architecture that we recommend that you use in order to develop the assembler. Now, uh, how should you actually go about it? How should you actually do the implementation? Well, uh, we recommend that uh, you follow what, uh, what is sometimes called a staged development. We want you to develop uh, uh, the assembler in stages. So, first of all, as I described in previous units, we want you to write a basic assembler that uh, uh, can handle programs, or heck, assembly programs that contain no symbols. Once you write this assembler, we want you to actually test it in isolation. That is, test it before you move on and do other things in this uh, project. Once this uh, uh, assembler, basic assembler, works to your satisfaction, you can go on and develop the symbol table module that can also be tested and, and, uh, and um, you, you should verify that you can create a symbol table and manage it in isolation from the other pieces uh, of the project. Finally, once you have these two uh, uh, abilities in place, you can put them together and create an assembler that can actually translate any given uh, assembly program. So this is, you know, yet another example of divide and conquer. You know, you take a complex uh, task, you split it into more manageable tasks and uh, complete and unit test each one of them in isolation. Now, in order to carry out this unit testing, we provide uh, a set of seven test programs that you are welcome to use in order to make sure that your assembler is actually working. Now, the first program, called add.asm, is very simple and uh, it's uh, provided in one flavor only. Every one of the next uh, uh, three programs is supplied in two different versions, with symbols and without symbols. So the without symbol version of each program has capital L uh, suffix, which stands for less symbols, you know, max less symbols, rectangle less symbols, and so on. And in the next few slides, I'm going to talk about each of these programs in isolation. And that's exactly what you should also uh, do in your project. You should test your assembler on each of these programs uh, in different stages of the development, and this will help you once again manage the process in a, in a good way. All right, so here's the ED program. Uh, the ED program is a very simple uh, hack language. It contains no symbols. It's just a bunch of uh, a few A and C instructions, and it is designed to verify that your assembler, your assembler can handle white space and instructions. That's it. Now, when you look at this program, uh, you probably uh, tell yourself that this is a very limited uh, test, right? Because, well, for one thing, we, haven't, we, we, we didn't even test all the possible uh, white space uh, options because we also have inline comments that uh, we, we don't see in this uh, program. And indeed, we don't claim that we provide uh, uh, programs that, uh, that uh, amount to an exhaustive uh, testing of your assembler. It's just a very basic test, and you are welcome and encouraged 
to take uh, this program add ASM and maybe make it more complicated, you know, uh, add more comments, add more uh, uh, white space, uh, add more instructions uh, if you want, and just make sure that your assembler can handle uh, um, uh, these kinds of programs, simple programs, uh, without any problems. So once again, the programs that we provide is just the minimum that, uh, that uh, uh, you're welcome to extend with your own testing as well. All right, so this is the Edge program. Uh, the next program is called Max, and uh, as you can see from the documentation, it is designed to compute the maximum of two values. This is really not interesting at all from a translator's uh, perspective. You know, the translator has no idea what the program is trying to do. Uh, the translator is interested only in the syntax, but I'm saying it because, you know, uh, uh, I want you to know um, uh, what is going on here. So this is the MAX program, and here is uh, another uh, version of this program without labels. So uh, without, I'm sorry, without symbols. And uh, so the only difference between these two uh, um, programs is that the second program, uh, in the second program, we replaced every symbol with its uh, uh, numeric uh, meaning. And once again, once you write your basic assembler, you should test it on max L. And only later, when you add the ability to handle symbols, you should test your assembler on max ASM. Uh, in a very similar fashion, we also provide a program called Rectangle that uh, draws a rectangle on the, uh, on the screen, as we see here in this uh, snapshot from the uh, CPU emulator. So here's the code of the uh, rectangle program. Once again, uh, we see that uh, we supply two different versions of the same program. On the left-hand side, you see the, uh, the uh, full-blown version with symbols. On the right-hand side, you see the same program without symbols. We basically replaced every symbol with its uh, numeric uh, uh, meaning. And once again, when you write your basic assembler, you should test it on rectangle L first, and only later, when you write the full-blown assembler, you test it on rectangle.asm. The last program that we provide is called Pong, and this is quite an elaborate program. It's a program that implements a Pong game. And the simplest way to describe it is to just give you a demo of how it works in the uh, CPU emulator. So that's what we'll do next. Here we are in the uh, CPU emulator. And um, we would like to demonstrate running a Pong game in the CPU emulator. So we go ahead and uh, load uh, the Pong program. So let us go to uh, projects, and within projects we go to uh, project six. And we see that we have a folder called Pong. Open it. And we see that, as usual, in this uh, project we have uh, two versions of the same program named Pong.asm and Pong.lessymbols.asm. Now, in the CPU emulator level, it doesn't really matter if you load into it uh, a program with or without symbols because the CPU emulator is going to resolve the symbols into physical addresses on the fly. Uh, in other words, the CPU emulator has a built-in assembler uh, in it. And when you load a symbolic program into the ROM, which, by the way, is something that you cannot really do, we can do it only because it's an, it's an emulator. Uh, so once again, it, it translates everything into binary code. And uh, uh, to prove it, let, let us do that. Let's, let's, uh, you know, let's select uh, this version of the program and uh, load it into the ROM. And I see that uh, I get a symbolic program, but uh, I, 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 there are no symbolic labels in it. All the symbolic labels, like you know, this is probably has been at R0, and it was translated into uh, at uh, 3. So, um, 
And once again, this is just, uh, you know, for illustration purposes, because in reality, uh, the program looks, uh, uh, excuse me, I think I have to do it here. Yeah, in reality, the program looks like this, but then obviously it's very difficult to, uh, to follow it. So in the simulator level, uh, we allow looking at the program both uh, symbolically as well as uh, uh, numerically. All right, so this is a program that implements a simple Pong game, and it's quite a huge program. If you uh, scroll, you know, downstream, you will see that this program is, uh, lo and behold, it is something like, uh, let's see, uh, something like 27,000 lines of code, which is a lot, right? But uh, it's a little bit um, uh, deceiving because the program itself, the, the Pong logic, the logic of the Pong game is, is much shorter. It's only maybe, I don't exactly remember, something like 200 lines of high level language uh, code. But by the time you translate this code into uh, binary code, uh, and now I'm talking about the compiler, you know, translating from uh, a high-level language into assembly. Then you get, you know, many more lines of code, but still you don't get so many lines of code. The reason we have so much code here is because what you see here is not only an implementation of the Pong game, but also an, imp an implementation of the entire operating system that enables us to control the screen, the keyboard, and uh, uh, mathematics operations, and numerous other things that are needed when you implement uh, and run high-level language uh, uh, programs. So once again, just to summarize, uh, it's important to note that uh, the code that we see here was originally written in uh, the Jack high-level language, and then it was translated by uh, a Jack compiler into, uh, eventually into uh, uh, the code that you see here. So this code was not written by a human being, it was written by a compiler. And of course, this whole business of writing high-level programs, uh, writing compilers and operating systems and so on, are not covered in Nanto Tetris Part 1, but rather they are covered in Nanto Tetris Part 2. And uh, yet, when you write an assembler, all this information is completely irrelevant. You know, what you have is a file that consists of numerous uh, uh, lines of uh, symbolic code, and you simply have to translate it into binary code. All right, so um, having said all that, let us uh, try to run the program. So I click the um, uh, fast forward, so to speak, and there seems to be a lot of uh, action uh, going on but uh, nothing appears on the screen. I'm, I'm a bit disappointed because I expected to play a Pong game and instead I see uh, something that looks like a program executing but uh, once again nothing is really happening. And indeed you have to realize that uh, what is happening here is the execution of a lot of setup code. Uh, the operating system is initializing all sorts of data structures and uh, uh, all sorts of drivers are loaded and, and so on and so forth. And it will take a while before uh, the programmer's code uh, proper will actually uh, start running. So if we lose our patience, as I'm sure that every one of you uh, has done already, we can stop this uh, 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 processing. We can, you know, rewind everything if we want, and uh, we can tell the uh, emulator that we don't want to see the program flow, and we do it by clicking this uh, control here, the no animation. Now, what we mean here is no uh, code or execution animation. So let's uh, uh, do this, and then run the program again, and hopefully we'll we'll get to see some pong action. All right, and uh, hallelujah, there's a Pong game uh, going on. That's quite amazing. Okay, so I'm playing Pong now. I'm not very good at it. Oh, dear. And, uh, you know, let me try another game. 
All right, uh, maybe I'll make some improvement now. Uh, wait, I have to, to do this. Okay, uh, playing Pong. Let's see if I'm any better than before. Uh, oh, hallelujah, I got a score of two, three. That's my uh, world record so far. And four, very impressive. And uh, game over. So what you saw here is a Pong game uh, in progress. I'm always excited to see uh, uh, programs like this uh, working uh, on the Hack computer because, you know, this is a program that was written by us in Jack. It was compiled uh, using a compiler that we wrote. And then uh, the uh, executable code could run on, on a computer that we actually built or a computer that you actually built uh, throughout this course. So this is, I think, very, very uh, satisfying. So this has been a demo of a Pong game. You're welcome to play uh, Pong uh, on your own, on your own computer using uh, the CPU emulator, which uh, is uh, stored uh, in your non Tetris uh, tools folder. And once again, I want to emphasize that as far as the assembler writer is concerned, all this story about Pong playing and so on, it's, you know, it's a very nice background story, but it has no relevance whatsoever to writing an assembler. An assembler could not care less if it has to translate uh, uh, 12 instructions or uh, 12,000 instructions. It's a computer program. It will process, you know, whatever file we give it to process, and, uh, and that's it. So I hope you enjoyed um, playing uh, Pong with our uh, Pong game. And uh, it's time to you know, open the black box and look at the uh, Pong uh, code. So here's the beginning of the Pong.asm program that we also supply as one of the test programs that you have to, uh, that you have to process, that your assembler has to process. Um, I'd like to make some observations about uh, this uh, Pong.asm uh, program because it's quite different in some respects from the previous uh, uh, programs that we saw in this uh, project. First of all, the code of uh, Pong was originally written in a language called Jack. Jack is a Java-like, simple, object-based language that we introduced in the second part of this course in uh, NAND to Tetris uh, part two. And in NAND to Tetris part two, we introduce this language and then we write a compiler that translates from this language all the way down to hack uh, assembly code. And, and so what you see here is the result of this translation. So, um, Writing this compiler, and there's also a virtual machine in the middle that I don't have time to, uh, 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 to talk about. Uh, you know, writing these uh, software layers is uh, quite an elaborate undertaking, but we do it in a very similar style to what we did in this course. We do it one step at a time, uh, and this is done in the second part of the course. The result of all this uh, translation effort is the ASM program that you see in front of you. So. The special thing about this program is that it was automatically generated by, uh, by the compiler and, uh, and by the virtual machine. The resulting code is about 28,000 uh, instructions long. If you wonder why it's so long, it is because it also includes the Jack operating system. And the operating system is another thing that we develop in uh, the second part of uh, uh, NAND to Tetris uh, course. And, uh, you know, taken together, we have uh, uh, an assembly language uh, program. And uh, if you translate it into binary code, then bingo, you have something that causes your computer to play Pong. And so uh, we thought that it's important uh, that as part of uh, this project, you will also translate. Uh, a so-called industrial strength uh, program, and Pong is one such program. Now, when you look at this code, if you explore it, you know, and we recommend that you look at it uh, 
at least uh, briefly, you know, you don't have to understand what's going on here. It's very difficult to understand um, uh, code just from looking at its uh, um, uh, symbolic, uh, I'm sorry, the assembly version of this code. But you will realize that, first of all, we don't have any white space. And that is because all the white space was uh, lost in, uh, in translation. And then you will see in this code all sorts of strange things. For example, you see some strange addresses, like 256. You know, where does this 256 come from? Well, you know, it comes from the way our virtual machine is implemented. Now, you may ask yourself, you know, what is a virtual machine? Well, to find out, you have to take the second part of the course. Uh, you also see all sorts of strange labels, like, for example, end underline ik, you know, where did this end ik uh, come from? Well, this was generated by the compiler automatically when it translated uh, the JEC code that was written by the programmer. And you also see some uh, all sorts of predefined symbols that we haven't seen before, like SP. <clears throat> what is SP? Well, SP stands for a stack pointer. And once again, this is something that we discuss in the second part uh, of the course. So. When you look at this code, you know, it's a little bit like reading genetic code, you know, DNA. Uh, you have all sorts of strange things that were uh, uh, created by previous generations, uh, so to speak. And uh, uh, indeed, the code that you see here was created by several layers of, uh, of evolution. Now, it's not exactly evolution, but we have a compiler that uh, added some stuff to the code. We have a virtual machine that added some stuff to the code. And finally, you know, you have something which becomes somewhat cryptic, but you can handle it to your assembler, and the assembler will translate it into machine code, and then finally we'll have something that actually runs on your hack computer. Okay, so this is uh, a long explanation of uh, the Pong.ASM program. As far as your assembler is concerned, all this explanation is irrelevant. You know, it just has to take this uh, file and translate it into binary code. So how should you test you know, uh, the results of your work? Well, uh, first of all, you have to use your assembler to generate uh, hack uh, programs written in binary code. And then you should test these uh, programs and make sure that they actually do what they're supposed to do. So one way to do it is to invoke the supplied hardware simulator load into it the built-in uh, hack uh, computer chip or, or the chip that you wrote, doesn't matter. Uh, although we recommend that you use the built-in chip to avoid the errors. And then load into this chip the hack code and run it. That's, that's one testing option. Another testing option is to do the same but use the CPU emulator instead of the uh, hardware simulator. This would be a more user-friendly way to carry out uh, this test. And finally, there is the option of choice, what, you, what we recommend that you actually do. Uh, we provide uh, a working assembler, which is uh, available to you on your personal computer if you've downloaded our software suite. Our assembler is called assembler, quite simply. And you can use our assembler to translate any one of the supplied uh, ASM programs, and then you can compare the code that our assembler generated to the code that your assembler has generated. If the two codes are the same, then you know that your assembler is at least as good as ours, maybe better. Okay, So uh, we do recommend that you use this uh, uh, third option in order to test your work, and here is how you actually do it. What we see here is a snapshot of the assembler that we supply in the course uh, uh, website, in, uh, actually in the NAND, uh, uh, NAND to Tetris uh, uh, website. So um, you invoke this program called assembler. This uh, nice uh, window pops up. And then you can load into uh, the assembler the ASM program, which uh, you see here in the left uh, uh, pane. Then you will click a button and our assembler will, will translate uh, the symbolic code into uh, binary code and you see the resulting binary code in the center 
uh, pane in this uh, uh, snapshot. Then you have an option to load into this program what we call a compare file. And the compare file is the hack program that was generated by your assembler. So once you do this, the program will not only load the compare file, it will also compare the two files, and then you will get a nice message saying uh, uh, that the comparison was successful, or uh, a somewhat uh, nasty message saying that the comparison was not successful, which means that your assembler produces code which is different from the code that our assembler produces. In which case, something is probably uh, uh, wrong in your assembler and you have to test and fix it. Okay, so this is the recommended way uh, to, to make sort of the final test that your assembler actually works. Uh, this is the source file, this is the, uh, uh, the hack file produced by our assembler, and this is the hack file produced by your assembler. So uh, this basically uh, sums up what you have to do. Uh, all the resources that you need are available in the NAND to Tetris uh, um, org uh, uh, website. And uh, the website describes the supplied files. There's no need to download anything because if you downloaded the software suite at the beginning of the course, then all the files that you need for this project are available on your personal computer in the project slash 06 uh, uh, directory. And there's another set of resources that you might find useful, uh, like the supplied assembler, the supplied uh, CPU emulator, uh, a tutorial, a proposed assembler API, and, uh, and so on. All these things are available in the website, and you are welcome to, uh, to use and uh, consult them. So this has been the unit that uh, uh, gave you, hopefully, all the information that you need in order to build the assembler uh, on your own, and uh, the next unit will sum up everything that we did uh, in this week.